Today's question is how to improve cardiovascular endurance. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with the way we are going to improve cardiovascular endurance naturally would relate to the way people breathe. And I'm talking about not just the way how we breathe during physical exercise, but even more about how people breathe day and night, or what is the effect of autonomic or unconscious breathing patterns that we have day and night on our cardiovascular endurance, or what is the relationship between these factors. Because in the past, all my life, I believe that like things like you can improve hemoglobin, you can improve blood vessels diameter by doing physical exercise more, by training yourself, so improving your VO2 max uh, to have like better long distance performance. These are all great techniques, but there is also correlation with our breathing patterns. And here I'm going to explain in details how it works. So now we first we can imagine and we can also explain why people who have poor health and those who have chronic health problems, why they have difficulties with physical exercise. So what is the reason why they are very limited in their cardiovascular endurance. And in order to understand that, we need to consider a very simple factor. How much people breathe, what is the breathing rate of healthy people and those people who have diseases at rest. So there is a medical norm for breathing at rest and that is six liters per minute for minute ventilation. So only six liters per minute, it's actually a very small amount. If you have such breathing, uh, you would virtually have a very tiny sensation of your own breath at rest because normal breathing or physiological norm is virtually tiny. People have like only slightest sensations. If we think about now sick people and how they breathe at rest, you, you can open normalbreathing.com homepage of our main website and you can see a big table with uh, more than 35 medical studies which measure it breathing or minute ventilation in people with diseases, heart disease, asthma, diabetes, cancer, epilepsy, COPD, and many other conditions. All these people, they breathe about 2.5 times more than the norm or around 15 liters a minute. So 15 liters a minute, much larger volume of air, and this is how we breathe at rest. Now we are going to make a transition to physical exercise to see how that influences physical exercise. But before making this transition, we are going to indicate here to outline, I'm going to outline one very important fact. That those people who breathe very little at rest, like medical norm, six liters per minute, and people can train themselves to breathe even slower and less, these people have much more oxygen. Because if we do body oxygen test, these people would have 40 seconds, and my best students, when they retrain their breath, they can get up to 50, 60 seconds, sometimes 70, 90 seconds, was the same body oxygen test. That means a lot of energy, ability to do exercise at high intensity, breathe only through the nose easily, even at maximum intensity exercise, very short sleep down to four, four and a half hours, and many other benefits of having very light breathing pattern. Now those people who are sick and having 15 liters for ventilation, they hyperventilate day at night, this is again the physiological law for people with chronic health conditions. These people would have reduced body oxygen level, maybe only about 12-15 seconds for the body oxygen test, very low numbers, and that also explains why the cardiovascular endurance and physical abilities are very restricted and very limited. They can start running, they open mouth, they start to gasp air, they get breathless, so and they cannot perform good performance. They cannot have good performance. Now I'm going to explain why. Imagine that you will start a moderate form of physical exercise, let's say light jogging, and for light jogging we need somewhere around 10 times more energy than at rest because at rest metabolism is limited, we mostly lose energy with heat and therefore of course energy requirements are very low. When we start exercise it's about 10 times higher, that means we need about 10 times more energy, uh, oxygen and we are going to produce about 10 times more CO2. As a result, if we do physiological measurements, we are going to discover that minute ventilation, how much we breathe, would be also increased 10 times. So therefore, if a person with normal breathing, physiological norm, six liters per minute, he or she starts physical light or moderate physical exercise, instead of six liters per minute, they are going to breathe 60 liters per minute. And 60 liters, it's not a huge number, actually most people can do it through the nose. It would be quite heavy, you probably would be able to hear it when it's done through the nose. And that relates to exercise of healthy people, 
uh, and relates to again moderate types of intensity of physical exercise. Now those people who are sick, they at rest already have 15 liters per minute for physical exercise, for sorry for minute ventilation, 15 liters we hyperventilate at rest, and therefore when they start the same light or moderate form of physical exercise, we also breathe 10 times heavier, and that means instead of 15 liters per minute, we breathe 150 liters per minute. And 150 is a very large number because that's about maximum number an average person can generate. Like if we ask an adult, breathe now, uh, can you please breathe as heavy and as fast as possible, like as fast as possible and as heavy as possible, largest amount of ventilation, that would be about 150 liters per minute. And this is exactly what we see in sick population if we ask them or if they start doing light forms of or moderate forms of physical activity. And that again dramatically reduces the ability to do physical exercise. So therefore my suggestion here to people who want to naturally improve their cardiovascular endurance to consider those factors, lifestyle changes that allow us to change, to, re to reduce our ventilation at rest so that we have slow and lighter breathing at rest 24 hours per day during sleep of course as well by slowing down our breathing and therefore we are going to improve our circulation and blood flow due to vasodilatory effects of carbon dioxide and that would help us to have better better results for the body oxygen test so normal number for the body oxygen test as i mentioned medical books would suggest 40 seconds sick people would have 10, 12, 15 seconds. I work with sick patients mostly now because I'm a briefing teacher, I have teach briefing retraining. And I've seen hundreds of students who would have very low results. It's very common for them to have around 15 seconds because of the heavy briefing. And that also explains the very reduced physical or endurance abilities, long-term cardiovascular endurance. And so healthy people would have much better endurance and if a person, a sick person, is able to retrain his or her breathing pattern by slowing down the unconscious, again, what we are talking about, not just doing some breathing exercise or something else, but to change the way we breathe day at night, and we do this very simple body oxygen test in order to measure breathing. So if these people are able to gradually improve the body oxygenation up to the medical norm, then the cardiovascular endurance is dramatically improved. So the same way can be followed by athletes because athletes, like depending on what type of physical exercise we do uh, tra during training and what type of sports we are interested in, they, they would be quite different. For example, free divers would have quite good uh, abilities to hold their breath and body oxygen results because we do also special type of training how to improve the uh, body oxygenation. And uh, some other people, uh, depends on the sport, on the situation, on the person, on the age, many other factors, may have we would generally have better physical health, but often not as good as we can, because it's possible to dramatically improve cardiovascular endurance and have, again, better results in long distance running, can be marathon, half marathon, or even longer races, by changing the way we breathe, because if we slow down we breathing at rest, we would be able to breathe slower and less during exercise as well. At rest, human body, uh, in terms of, like, if we think about healthy people, utilizes very small amount, only about 25% or one quarter of oxygen that we inhale. You can imagine three quarters are exhaled back, and that is uh, present at health. If we think about sick people, the oxygen extraction is even worse. So uh, sick people who have 15 liters per minute ventilation, again, this is common for heart disease, diabetes, asthma, cancer, many other conditions, they utilize only 10% of inhaled oxygen. So 90% we exhale back. You can imagine the breathing that they have is very ineffective. And not only that, that in spite of the heavy breathing, hyperventilation, the body oxygenation is very low. So healthy people again breathe slow and lighter and the oxygen extraction is higher. But if we retrain our breath, if we slow down our breathing even further, because for example, yoga masters are supposed to have very high uh, results for the breath holding time test and so with Dr. Buteyka and many of his doctors achieved up to two three minutes for the body oxygen test which is a very hard test because it's done after exhalation and only until first stress or discomfort without any uh, pushing yourself and these people are able to achieve really very 
good cardiovascular endurance, sport performance results by changing the way we breathe. So therefore, the kind of the general idea, the general suggestion that uh, is possible to use for people who want to improve their cardiovascular endurance is slow down their breathing. And that is possible while doing physical exercise with 100% nose breathing. This is the hardest way by far, but that allows best results, even better to use training mask or some other devices, which kind of uh, function the same way as an extension of your nose that help you to increase CO2 level and slow down your breathing at rest later after the exercise, because we view physical exercise uh, as a main factor that allows people to have slow, lighter breathing after physical exercise, and that improves physical health. Now, next factor would relate to practicing breathing exercises. There are different varieties here. People can combine them with meditation. People can use buteka, reduce breathing, pranayama, prolog device, DIY device. All these techniques allows to improve body oxygenation. And of course, there are numerous lifestyle changes which are exceptionally easy to monitor in terms of the efficiency by using the body oxygen test. Because this is what the way I teach my students for the last 15 years and the people who were able to like dramatically improve their sport performance, their cardiovascular endurance, they address those lifestyle changes which help them to have better and better results for the body oxygen test. And these lifestyle changes can relate to diet, nutritional supplementation, posture, thermoregulation, many, many other factors which you can find also in models of normalbriefing.com.